I'm going to take you through the creative process to take a closer look in what goes into a hand-drawn map that carries a thousand dollar price tag. Our journey takes us to the southeast coastal United States where the infamous Blackbeard ran the Queen Anne's Revenge aground at the Beaufort Inlet, North Carolina. The process begins essentially working from the outside in and I start with a three-part border. The middle portion is a decorative element with acanthus flourishes. The most inner border represents the map's scale. Lastly, a hatched line outer border to pull it all in. At the very end, I'll fill in this decorative portion with white to really frame the map as a focal point. If I do this now, the pencil tends to fall off the paper when drawing the remainder of the map and through the weathering process, so I save all the white highlights last. I've drawn a pencil grid in order to scale up the geography accurately and keep all land and islands in correct proportion. Now it's drawing out the entire map first in pencil. Time to outline the map's title. I would love to save time and do this in pen right off the bat. However, for letter placements and spacing reasons, it's always wise to have a rough outline as a guide first. Aside from the map's main title, the first thing to go down in black ink is generally what I call the titles. The cities, towns, ocean names, bays, and so on. This of course isn't required to be done in pencil first. I've turned one of my old business cards into a template which allows me to write straight with consistent letter sizes across the map and looks very crisp. Because many of the titles run off the land masses, I do them first so I can draw the borders in pen around the text with ease. I add a very subtle underlining to give the land masses a slight 3D effect and emphasize their presence out of the surrounding water. Now for the most tedious and time-consuming portion of any map I do, the wooded and forested areas. I've found drawing individual trees give a far more eye-catching and detailed finish. I also like to do this pointillism within the land boundaries to represent any sort of shorelines, coast, and so on, as not all land masses typically have foliage right to the very edge. I'm taking a bit of creative license here as this map is representative of the year 1718 when the inlet was much less developed. I'm now taking the same black water solution I used on the outer edges of the paper to enhance the shoreline. This provides a little extra depth and detail to distinguish where the water meets land. Now for my absolute favorite part in drawing this entire map, outlining the shorelines in ink. This really makes the defining land and sea boundaries stand out. I've chosen this simple method of horizontal lines to represent the shore as it adds to the overall vintage feel of the map. I'm just going to name this body of water and now time for the compass. I'm going to make this one a bit more decorative as they serve as one of many focal points to a map. Time for the Queen Anne's Revenge. You'll notice I wasn't happy with the first rendition I drew, so I've cut it out and patched a piece of paper underneath to redraw the ship. I've included something of a contextual, educational blurb about the grounding of the ship here. And simply due to space, there were other relative facts and details I would have liked to include. 
Now I want to disclose that I'm aware that this depiction of Blackbeard's flag is not historically accurate, but nonetheless has been commonly associated with Blackbeard, thus I've chosen to include it for some imagery within the map. Now that everything within the ocean area has been drawn, I add the compass directional lines. I'm going to adhere this backer paper last to the main map layer. But at a glance, I've decided I don't like it and I'm going to start over. Just kidding. This gives the map a more rough and weathered look and contrasts nicely against the clean, unwrinkled backer paper. I simply go along the edges and parts of the middle with some glue and adhere the map layer to the backer. Now for the finishing touches of white to really make the map stand out. I'll do this within the decorative inner border and any other elements to highlight on the map, like the ship and the compass. And last but not least, the map is embossed with the black point insignia, the distinguishing mark of map making excellence. Signed and complete. Overall, this map took just over 25 hours to complete. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.